Well, good afternoon and welcome to this special Islands That Sports Talk. I'm your host, Earl Beeston. I'm joined by uh, members of the football fraternity, both locally and abroad. I'm with Richard Todd. I'm with Coach Rus Russo. Roscoe. Roscoe. And Coach Cooper. Uh, we're we're going to be talking about the International Development Academy camp uh, that is scheduled to be hosted in Bermuda. Uh, Richard, let, let's start off with you because you're on island here. Um, what, what are the opportunities that the I, IDA actually brings to the island uh, as an offer for our young people? Uh, yeah, so my relationship began working with IDA maybe about four years ago, uh, previously when some of them were working under the entity of GPS, uh, and they were hosting numerous uh, tournaments throughout the U.S., uh, as well as the, the residential programs. Um, that followed uh, after um, GPS and the creation of IDA. Uh, and IDA have been coming on island for probably about the past three years, working along with us, uh, trying to identify players uh, and provide information uh, and pathways for them to continue their football and their education. Um, they have a number of residential programs. They have uh, programs in Italy, in the United Kingdom, in Spain, uh, and in the United States. Um, in addition to that, we work together with IDA. Um, they have a network of, of teams and organizations that work with them, the surf in particular, and that has opened up doors that we have seen in the media over the past couple of weeks for us to send local players over to guest play uh, with surf teams uh, at some of the top tournaments and events that they attend. Um, so this, this creates an opportunity for the players to be seen, to gain uh, experience uh, and valuable exposure, right? So the, the residential programs um, are geared towards those players uh, who are looking and potentially trying to find a pathway into professional football uh, while still maintaining uh, somewhat of an academic base uh, so that they can keep their options available with regards to uh, university and et cetera, right? So it just continues to evolve. Uh, as you would note now, it's wonderful news this year with Coach Cooper uh, heading over to IDA and is now based in the United Kingdom uh, and working there as a coach. So uh, the opportunities not only exist for us in terms of player development, uh, but there are also some opportunities that are developing for potentially additional coaches maybe to, to join Cooper in the UK, uh, and we're excited about that. So they, they are a true developmental partner uh, that just offers some international options for us and pathways for our coaches and our players. Mm. And Coach Roscoe, the, the, the program offers, as Richard has said, both for the, the, the player and, in some positions, coaches. Um, what, 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 in the setup, how do you, how do you identify um, those prospects, both at, at the, the player level and possibly at the coaching level? So that's one thing that, the, 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 um, so Richard just had a visit over to the UK and we spent some time together, which was, which was a really productive time for us at the academy. So from our end, we're, we're looking to get over to the island within the next month. Um, and I appreciate there's, you've just had finals weekend just gone on in the island. Um, but uh, I appreciate there's probably going to be um, the international uh, training camp happening through May as well. So for me, it'll be great to get over in the month of May um, to then start identifying some talent, um, but not just talent uh, as, as players, but also some coaches. Um and I think that we've already got a number of players from from lots of different teams across the island. Um, and off the back of that, where we uh, are, are gaining international clearance for those players to come and come and play uh, for our team in the UK, naturally just builds relationships with people like Richard, um, you know, people like Ray Jones, who's at Devonshire Colts, um, you know, or or, or or where Coach Coops was, um, you know, with the Bascoms as well, just to, just to name but a few. So from our end, plan to work with Richard um, and hopefully the BFA to try and uh, 
do a talent ID event um, and then offer a couple of spaces at least for someone um, or a couple of players to come over all expense to, to experience the academy um, and, uh, and hopefully it might be a location for them in the future. Mm. And, and of course, Coach Cooper, um, you've settled into the UK now. Um, that, that transition at, and, and the work you've been doing, uh, because I see you posting a lot of stuff, how, how, have, how has that adjustment for you been? I think um, just like with, with the life of it all, really. I mean, football-wise, I pretty much settled right in and like got to work right away. Um, but just everything within it, you know, so like not living with my family, things like that, getting around, getting around to different places and even just like lifestyle things. Right. So like we were saying just now, my first six weeks was like, <laughs> like my, my, my fitness like plummeted. Right. Um, but then obviously getting back in, in, in January and, and, you know, being able to sort myself out, it's, it's, yeah, it's been great. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome Neil. Um, hope all is well. All is well here in, in New Jersey, in the States. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I, I don't really have too much to add because these are the, the, you got the main guys on the, on the UK side and obviously Richard in, uh, on the island with you. Um, I mean, really, all I can add really from an IDA kind of HQ point of view is um, just, you know, champion everything that's already been said. Obviously, Richard's kind of demonstrated to some people on the island already how the uh, relationship can work, even at the younger ages, where a couple of those kids obviously went to the Jefferson Cup about a month ago and mm -hmm. were really successful at the younger ages. And obviously in the prime ages, and I would say the prime ages are, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old, we have we have evidence of the relationship working with, you know, Bermudan lads already in the academy and having various successes. Um, and obviously at the at the older ages with the, with the coaching set up as well. I mean, and, and we really are looking for a couple of additional staff in positions to be filled. So, um, you know, through, through Richard's network, through people we meet on the island, I'm sure when we come over and, uh, you know, just, you know, giving your influence and getting us out there in the media and letting people know what this is all about and what the opportunities, uh, you know, can come as a result of this relationship would, would be huge for us. So... I think it's exciting times and, um, you know, maybe some little tidbits to add in is in the future, we're looking at adding a women's program as well. Um, so not just for the male player, but for the female player. Um, obviously, the female game in, in the UK is, is a high level now at the very, a very top of the game. But uh, for all the various levels, grassroots level in the UK, the, the female game is, is expanding rapidly. So uh, we want to be able to tap into that and offer female players from the island an opportunity to do exactly what the male players are doing. I know I know some female players from Bermuda are already at various private schools, etc. in the UK or pursuing education in the UK. So why not for us to be a destination to do that, you know, education and that and that football pathway. And I, I, I would say probably in turn that will that will help the you know the Bermudan program at the national team level on the female side maybe as well. Mm. So uh, lots of things to to think about lots of things to make happen and uh we're excited for this relationship to continue to flourish sure richard um it's it's ideal because um they offer the opportunities like the young men have had in the u.s as well as the uk so there's options there um for for young people to look to go well young people and the parents to look to go either side um how do you identify what's best are you looking at the academic side while trying to place them in the in the in the football side uh certainly finding the the right fit and the balance for each individual uh athlete is important uh and i stress that to to all of the players and the parents that i communicate with there is no one fit for everyone mm -hmm. um so what was really beneficial for me was to get over to the uk uh, and to make a visit to the IDA campus and to look at the setups and the rooms and hear about how the meals are structured, uh, um, look at the the, the tutoring, uh, the educational aspects, and then the training environment. And, and I was really impressed. Everything is really, in my opinion, first class uh, in terms of uh, the setup, right? Um, so, yeah, that is key. And that visit 
is really key, Earl. Um, unfortunately, I think we have many players and parents who are making moves off to uh, programs in schools without first doing due diligence of researching, mm -hmm. making sure this is the right fit, asking the questions, and then doing the visit, right? Mm -hmm. Because there, there's a sense, I mean, just as an example, we had 15 players from the Warwick Archers who left last year to head off to go to boarding school. Early indication is that we'll have another 12 who are heading out this year, right? So there, there are large numbers that are going, but some people are going off and then figuring out this is not quite right. This is not what we expected. You have to make the visit and, and you know, do all the research to, to ensure. Um, one of the key things for me, Earl, here on the island is to create collaboration mm -hmm. because I, I believe – you know, the only way to really move our football forward, it's not based around one program. It's not based around the Warwick Archers being able to have this relationship and do these things. It, it needs to be duplicated at the other clubs. And I'm very open to sharing um, and getting other clubs involved in the process, right? So uh, one example of that is, is that we are taking three teams, three age groups this summer through IDA to the Super Cup in Northern Ireland which was formerly the Milk Cup, which is a very high level of competition. Mm -hmm. But those teams are not traveling as Warwick Archers teams. They are IDA Bermuda select teams. So we're, we're trying to get to that point where we don't want clubs, players, and parents feeling like uh, the player is being poached or he's being recruited. Um, so in that sense, uh, we're going to play under IDA. IDA is facilitating this for us. Uh, and then it opens up opportunities for future events as well. It could be a college showcase that we're getting, uh, the, you know, boys or girls off to because they need to be seen. Uh, and of course, again, as you can see, it could be done on an individual basis as well. So mm -hmm. I'm not sitting here selfishly saying this is Warwick Archers and we're trying to, to keep it all. Um, I'm just a point person here and the relationship has expanded. Cooper is there now. Uh, I was quite surprised to to learn and to see that Razier Jones uh, was there. So IDA are already starting to branch out and make more connections in the island. I just think it's essential we work together. Okay. So from my position as president of the Coaches Association, I've already been in dialogue and discussion with the Football Association as to how we can work together to support the ID event in May. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got somewhat of a mutual agreement uh, in place and we are going to be working to to ensure that we can facilitate this opportunity for the local players to be seen. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be no costs associated with the players attending the event. Uh, and as Roscoe has spoke, um, we're looking to try to provide an opportunity to identify a few players who would have the chance to maybe go over uh, to the UK, join the preseason. Uh, and experience what it's like over there uh, in that environment. Um, so, again, we're working. We're working together. The pieces are all coming together with the various entities, and, and I think that this is the model uh, that we need to follow: is how do we help each other uh, to grow our programs collectively across the island? Sure. What age groups are you talking about for the Northern Ireland trip? So we are taking a U14, a U16, and a U18 uh, age team. Uh, across to to uh, the Super Cup. Um, and while initially we have a, a core around the Warwick Archers, mm -hmm. the, the plan and the vision is to expand this and open it up so that we can get more players from the island uh, participating, ideally maybe taking our, our, our best talent uh, across to be seen because the tournament is of a very high level. A lot of the top professional clubs and academies from Europe will be in attendance. Uh, so there's an opportunity for us to gauge our players in, in relation to peers in other jurisdictions mm -hmm. and as well as to, to be able to provide them exposure. And you never know uh, what might happen. You know, a player could be seen and, and a door and an opportunity opens up, um, just like with those boys who went to the Jefferson Cup and the Eastern International Cup. When mm -hmm. they do well, that generates attention. That will create future opportunities for them. And then there are others who say, hey, how can we get more players over here? Um, I've got an event that we're going to. Can we get, 
you know, some additional players in to be able to support us. So uh, I, I'm really pleased the, the players are being really good ambassadors, uh, you know, for the island and opening opportunities up. Um, Daniel Cook, who was a standout uh, in the under 17, the MVP um, mm -hmm. for, for the division in the just concluded cup. He was recently uh, at IDA, so he's been there and been a part of that experience as well. So th I think the more that we're getting our talented players out and they're being seen, the more interest it generates. And hence, that's why Roscoe and the others are, are planning to come on island uh, next month. We're looking at May the 15th uh, to be able to have this ID event, uh, which will basically be looking at players in the training putting them into game situations and then assessing them from there. Uh, but also we want to identify some local coaches that maybe mm -hmm. are working with the teams so that they can be assessed as well for uh, the potential maybe to go over and join Coach Cooper. Uh, and Roscoe and I even talked that it could be even short terms, three months and six months since. Um, you know, and I, and I think that that's a piece that's missing in terms of our coach development um, here on the island. Sure. Coach Roscoe, what 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 are you looking for in a player when you do these ID games? Well, it's a really interesting one, and I think probably it might be a good one for Coops to answer. Um, well, let me answer what we're looking for. We're looking for ambitious uh, young men that that have got a real passion for the game to to to, to achieve. And, and to play at the highest possible level they could possibly play at. <clears throat> a strange story for you. I actually, uh, back in 1999, I actually I played in a game against uh, uh, Kyle Lightbourne, the national team manager, when he was at Stoke City. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, what would me uh, and for the academy, especially, we're looking for, for players that, that want an opportunity. Um, and, and I believe that the UK provides um, a fluent pathway based on the passport, but based on international clearance, um, and, you know, from, and, and I hope, Richard, you saw this when you were here, um, and, and obviously from you, Coach, I hope you see it and it every day, um, that, that we, have a, we have a good pathway for you boys to come in and play semi-professional um, straight away. Uh, for Coach Coops, you know, in the last month or two months, Coops, you've been in, you've been the goalkeeper coach for the first team, um, and, and seen some fantastic um, football matches as well. Uh, so I think probably that's what we're looking for. But I think the key thing for me is sometimes, and, and I spoke about this on his visit, is sometimes um, when the players arrive on arrive here in the UK. Um, I think sometimes they're blown away a little bit by the intensity and the pace, but I think probably uh, Coach Coops is is probably more qualified to speak about that because of of the way that he transitioned when he arrived in the UK. Mm -hmm. So, Coop, um, clearly we 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 we've seen the struggles that some of our players, especially some of our more talented players. Um, have had and making transitions outside of the country, not just in the UK, but even in the US, uh, because they, they believe that their talent alone can carry them. Um, now that they, they'll have a few weeks, probably a month or so, um, what are some of the things that you want to stress to them about if they get the opportunity, what they need to be prepared for? So number one for me, and this is just with anything, is is just character, right? I mean. I, I think the things on the field, I, I think that's the easiest part if we're looking at it holistically. That's that's the easy part because you can always teach someone how to make a pass and things like that. But I think the things outside of the game, I think that's number one. You know what I mean? So I, I posted something the other day and I said it straight up like this. This life is brutal. It's, it's, it's a super brutal life, especially when you think about the highest of the higher levels. So, for example, I have a friend at Southampton. You guys there? Yeah, yeah. Can you guys? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So yeah, so I I have a friend who's who's, who's, the, who's the goalkeeper coach for, for Southampton, and um, just his schedule alone is 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 mental, right? 
Like, for example, uh, they just had a game in, in Burnley. And so Southampton's obviously right on the coast. Burnley's way north next to Manchester. They have to fly up, right? Right after the game, they have to fly back down. He probably doesn't get home until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And then he has to be back at the training ground for 9, 10 o'clock in the next morning. Right? Or, sorry, the, the same morning. So it, it's a it's a brutal life. And it and the the higher you get, the the more brutal he is. You know, so um, I think character... And I think courage is, 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 is super important. And I think what you do off the field is really going to determine how, how successful you are. So, for example, like with me, um, like, like coaching, my first six weeks here, and, and you know, Ross, can, Ross can, speak, um, can, can speak about it as well. My six weeks here was successful basically from what I did off the field. So um, we have four goalkeepers here. And um, basically what I did my first two weeks here, I watched not only the last three matches each, but the first couple of games during the season. So we're talking about back in August, and then obviously the matches within October because I arrived November 2nd. So, so you're talking about watching 12, 15 games, and not only watching the games, but but uh, really, really doing sharp analysis, right? Taking stats, looking at habits, looking at things like that, and then obviously making a curriculum to, to speak to it and, and to develop it. And then obviously with that, with, with the social side of things, you have to find a way to make it so that all four of these goalkeepers develop together. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I think I think that's super important. And obviously that's that's the approach we have as well with with uh with all of our players. You know, so obviously we have the 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 individual approach, but it has to be team as well because the the reality is it's a team sport. And if you can't work within a team then it's you're just gonna fail, aren't you? So yeah. But I think that's super important. The character is always number one for me. Sure. Neil, in, in the US, clearly <clears throat> it's still growing there. Um, how, how do you see the development, um, you know, in, or the progress of, of things that IDA is doing in the US? Yeah, I mean, like you said, the game in the US is developing all the time. Um, luckily, if you uh, you know are connected with the right infrastructure and the right clubs, which obviously IDA are in in the US, then you know you're only as good as your coaches, and that's uh, and that that's going to help the players. Um, so yeah, we're very well connected. Um, every interaction or experience, we like to think that we're providing or offering for these young student athletes is going to have a positive impact and help mould them for their next step. So the best, and, and touching on what you just asked the guys about what what we're looking for, and I think throughout throughout the global game, it's, it's all the same. You're looking for somebody that's humble, somebody that wants to work hard, somebody that wants to you know grasp the opportunity and uh, and and really you know grab the ball by the horns and and give it a good go, not rely on somebody else to do the hard. I'd work for them. Mm. Um, and basically, with these. Okay, I think he's. Yeah. So, so Richard, um, any 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 final thoughts from your end? Um, what what you're hoping uh, can be accomplished in this in this uh, camp coming up? Yeah, we're going to look to start uh, promoting uh, hopefully within the next week. Uh, we're hoping that we get a, a good response uh, in the targeted age groups. Uh, we are looking for uh, players in the 17, 18 age group. Uh, also, a few of the older players between 21 and 23, maybe who are not um, in college or university, but are still looking for an opportunity to get on a professional pathway. Uh, so Roscoe will certainly be looking at those players. Uh, and then the other group that we're, I'm really excited about targeting is uh, the females as well. Um, mm. So Roscoe and I spoke while, when we went over. Um, by the way, IDA's campus is located right next door to the University of Reading. Uh, and they will do some activities on that campus. Uh, and Roscoe and I spoke about um, the relationship that IDA had with Hartley Whitney. Uh, the, the semi-pro club there, uh, and they have a women's program. Uh, and so it could be an opportunity for uh, some of our female players uh, who are maybe trying to combine uh, studies along with playing in the UK. 
Um, so we've already, I've already identified a couple of them and have been talking about uh, that particular option. Um, but but it's good because it's there's something for everyone. You know, it's for the boys who are in school and looking for still that academic pathway. It's for the player who's maybe a little bit older, has finished school or didn't go off to school, but still has that potential and that desire. And then we're looking at the female side. And then, of course, uh, as we spoke about the potential to identify uh, coaches who might uh, be able to follow along uh, with what Co Coach Cooper is doing. So um, certainly we will be sending out um, the information, the dates, and the registration process. Uh, I would just encourage as many people uh, as possible who are interested uh, to register. Uh, we will then look at the, the list of names and then have a selection uh, based on um, maximum numbers. Um, but we are looking to try to get, if we can get 36 players in each one of those age groups, um, that's ideal for us because then we can put squads of 18 together, look at them in training, look at them in games, uh, and then see if we can, you know, identify players who maybe can move on and follow up. Um, I certainly would encourage everyone to do a bit of research, visit the IDA website, um, look at their program, look at the different locations and what they offer, uh, and then certainly reach out and ask questions. If you have some questions, I'd be happy to answer um, or just reach directly to, to Roscoe. There's Neil uh, Tommaso, who is the general manager, is based in the U.S. Uh, also. And then, of course, uh, Coach Cooper, uh, who is probably one of the best resources that you can have because he is right there uh, inside of the program. Uh, so not only as a resource for information, but I see Coach Cooper as being very, very important in terms of a support structure for the Bermuda players when they go over. And, and then helping them to be able to settle in and have a familiar face uh, that, that he, he they can relate to. Mm, definitely. Well, <clears throat> Coach Roscoe, any, any parting words? Because I know uh, it would be interesting to talk to you guys once you get, arrive in Bermuda and, and you start to, to, to you know, match together with the, with the players and, and possibly coaches. Um, any, any, any words of, of wanting to, people to show up and, and be a part? Yeah, so I suppose for me, um, is, is is people get to know who we are. Right now, I've worked with, in the last two years, we've worked with 12 different players that hold uh, Bermudan nationality from the ages of uh, 17 all the way through to 21 um, with uh, Richard Jones Jr. currently being in the national squad and, and represented the national squad. So uh, really... Delighted that Daniel Cook has, has delivered the MVP this weekend. So these kind of my, my past my party message to to everyone is that could be you this time next year. Um, and this is a really great opportunity for you to 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 come in and experience you know where uh, football was created uh, and be a part of a fantastic. So um, keep for everyone just turn up um it'll be a pleasure to meet you uh, and demonstrate maybe what pathway to do best um coming to potentially join the academy mm. well I, again coop uh your 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 valuable knowledge uh, of being there being in the environment having already associated with other bermuda players that's valuable as well as richard said if anybody reach out Reach out, find out. Um, the IDA website. Can you? Can anyone give it to me? Yeah. So I think it's uh, www.internationalda.com. I'd also recommend if you're on Instagram um, to to look for. Um, uh, I think it's ID Football Acad um, because that's our UK direct Instagram, um, uh, and that will just demonstrate. Um, just some of the good work that's going on. And, and again, just in this last week, we've had uh, Richard Jones Jr. playing in the first team semi-professional. Ryan Lopes scored a hat-trick against Maidstone, National League team U23s. Isaiah scored the winner against Wo Isaiah Blankendale. Uh, I think his brother's Eusebio in the national team. He scored the winner against Woking under-23s just on Thursday night. 
So this has all happened in the space of the last few days. And and, and on top of that, uh, Coach Coops took a team, a U18 team to the quarterfinal uh, in the Junior Premier League. Um, so, again, some really great opportunities for, for everyone on the island to, to come and experience this. Sure. Well, gentlemen, we look forward to seeing you on the island um, next week or week after next. That's two weeks. Um, any parting, Richard? No, just thank you all. We appreciate uh, your time and just providing the opportunity for us to speak a little bit about the opportunities that will be available. Not a problem at all. Guys, thank you very much. We we'll look forward to seeing you on island. Thank you, Earl. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Gerald. Thanks Bye. a lot, guys. Bye.